Everyone always talks about how season 3 is so, so good. But I hardly ever hear any love for what I think is seriously one of the best episodes and one of the most underrated episodes of the entire show. The Beach. This episode completely flipped how the story was being told and brought into a new light the villains of the show. It took time away from the heroes and shed light on the side of the story that we rarely get to see. And yes, throughout the episode we did get glimpses of our heroes in their own battle against Combustion Man, but the focus is on the villains, the villains and their own separate lives. Up until this point, we are really only shown one side to these bad guys. The side that they show to our heroes. In season 2, we saw the fighting side. The side where they went all out. They would do anything to complete their mission, and nothing else mattered. Throughout these two seasons, this is what we are made to believe. Made to think. We would never consider another side to these monsters because of what they were doing and what cause they were fighting for. So when the beach rolled around, the writers just went, you know those villains? Yeah, that's not them at all. And then for 22 minutes we are transported to a completely new dimension. Where these people who up until now we thought to be the most evil, maniacal and horrible human beings are acting like just normal people, teenagers. The beach showed us that the villains are real people. They have feelings, they get hurt, they have fun and they enjoy themselves. They're a little cringy at times, they like attention, and as much as they love being villains, sometimes they just want to be normal. It was insane. A whole new side to Azula, Mei, Tai Li, and yes, Zuko. But we did see a little bit of his other side in season 2 when he was helping Iroh with his tea shop. But for the other three, when they were just acting like normal teenagers, I was blown away. Zuko even says it here. Normal teenagers worry about bad skin. I don't have that luxury. My father decided to teach me a permanent lesson on my face. It was seriously phenomenal how this scene played out. Mei keeping all her feelings bottled up inside, getting anything she wanted growing up, but only if she was well behaved. She followed all the rules and stayed out of trouble afraid of stepping out of line. So much so that now all she does is stay in line. She doesn't care about anything, simply keeps to herself. But then she does overcome this and finally cares enough about something to save Zuko while he's escaping the boiling rock. And Tai Li growing up without her own identity. No attention as she was growing, so constantly she seeks attention from those around her. Joining the circus to free herself from a matched set. Now we don't see her directly overcome this, but we do see her happily joining the Kyoshi Warriors at the end of the series. Becoming part of this mixed set, realizing that you can still be yourself even if those around you are part of the same set. And Zuko, he thought he would be happy. He thought all he wanted was his father's love. But he's not. He's angry. Angry at himself. Angry that he betrayed his uncle. Angry that he couldn't follow his own path. And angry that he's not being himself. He's being someone he's not, living in a facade, and he's confused. But in the end, he does find his own path. His anger for himself becomes motivation. Motivation to fight for what is right and to seek justice and peace above all. And finally, Azula. Imperfectly perfect. She always says she doesn't care that her mother hated her. That she thought she was a monster. She says it doesn't bother her but we can see that it does. She's been taught to show no fear, no emotion, and keep everything bottled up inside, never letting loose. But deep down we can see this isn't her. 
and this perfectly shows her descent into madness in the final act. It all just finally gets to her. She wanted her mother's love, and even when she has it, she doesn't believe. Truly, each villain in these few minutes is given more story than some shows are capable of in their entire runtime. This episode took story writing and character writing to a whole new level, showing that the story doesn't just have to revolve around the heroes. And the villains are humans, and they have their own paths, their own feelings, and their own stories to tell, just like us. That is going to be the video for today, an analysis of one of the best episodes in season three of The Last Airbender. Let me know down below if you'd like to see more focused videos like these, or if you prefer the more spaced out, best to worst type videos I've been doing recently. But with that, my name is Rohan. Make sure you subscribe for everything Avatar, and until next time. Every week is fashion week for me. Wake up, put on all the freshest shit you ever seen. New York, LA, Milan, Italy.